12 years ago, I was just a beginner photographer. I mean, I was at the point where I believed that photographing JPEG and having a DSLR, no matter what that DSLR was, and a simple kit lens and a simple sling bag was enough to do landscape photography. This was my entire photographic universe. And there wasn't that many videos on YouTube like it is today where I could look and see, okay, this person lives uh, through uh, his work in landscape photography. And he, he tells me that I need this kind of gear, this kind of accessories, and I can look up to. There wasn't that option. So this is also the reason I'm making these videos. Uh, I'm a full-time landscape photographer based in Romania. I'm doing this for 10 years. So for 10 years, I live only from landscape photography. And if you want to hear what a person like me has to say in terms of gear, equipment, uh, and what to do in the field in different situations, then that is the reason for which you subscribe to my channel. You click the bell notification because apparently YouTube doesn't send uh, my videos to my subscribers. But this is the case with everybody. So today I want to talk about, from my own experience, uh, about the, the accessories that you need to buy because accessories can be uh, extremely expensive and I had my share of buying accessories that I really didn't need. Uh, I bought different brands and today after 10 years I have a kit, I have a bag, I have a, a kind of uh, an equipment that I use and I think it's the optimum equipment that you or the essential equipment that you can have with you if you want to make landscape photography. These are the accessories that I'm using and I will briefly talk about each and every one. I will tell you the brand, I will tell you the reason why I'm having this, but maybe in more detail I could do separate videos for each type of um, accessory and show you how you are really using that to maximize your photos. Um, maybe this would be an interesting thing. Leave a comment below if you are interested to see these kind of videos. So for now, just let's just uh, uh, see what exactly I'm having here. The first accessory that you are going to buy as a landscape photographer is going to be a tripod. And mine is um, a carbon fiber Manfrotto, the 055 series. The reason it's not the 190 series is because I'm... Uh, 190 centimeters, 1.9 meters in tall, <laughs> and uh, I need a tripod that it's uh, pretty that rises pretty high above the ground. You need to think of the tripod uh, in terms of height. It's very important, otherwise you'll have uh, back pain if you're photographing for extended periods of time. So you need to be a, a tripod that extends kind of like this up to your height. Now it's carbon fiber. Yes, it's lighter when you uh, are carrying the tripod. Uh, my idea of buying the tripod is to invest once and then just basically be buried with your tripod. You don't need to invest in your tripod every five years. You can buy one tripod and have it for, let's say, 10 years or 15 or maybe 20 years. The thing that I, I think I'm gonna change at some point is gonna be the head. I want a head uh, that it's different um, from this one because the plate that uh, Manfrotto is using, it's not compatible with Arca Swiss uh, L brackets and my L bracket doesn't allow me to uh, open, uh, for example, the, the LCD screen and do other things. So this is mainly the, the, the main important thing that I will change in the future. But the reason for which you buy a good tripod is you need to trust your tripod. When you go photograph waterfalls and the legs of this tripod are in, wa in water and you're doing a 10 minute exposure, a 5 minute exposure, a 30 second exposure, you need to make sure that this tripod will hold and the photo is going to be clear. When you are up on the plateau and there's a small breeze, a small wind, you need to make sure this tripod will work. Uh, so that's why you spend some money and you buy a good tripod from the start. You don't spend money on the bad tripod because in the end you'll end up with this and uh, you'll just spend more money for no use. One of the accessories that you're not going to buy right away, um, it's a good backpack, a backpack that it's made 
for landscape photographers and you are going to think that having a mountain or a hiking backpack with just a sling bag uh, on your uh, shoulder can do the trick. First of all, if you're going to wear a sling uh, kind of thing bag, it will not be the most, let's say, friendly thing to have on you when you're going to move and then if you put a lot of weight over there and you carry this for a long period of time over the years, you're gonna hinder or injure your um, backpack your back your backpack you're gonna uh, injure your back so you at, at a certain point you'll realize that you need um, a backpack that it's uh, thought and designed for landscape protection now my backpack it's it's a low pro i need to change it it's it's torn it's wear down it it's a backpack that i have seen better days so i need to change it it opens in the front and i don't like this because i always get this this play this part of the backpack either dirty or wet especially in winter so it's not good the good thing is that this kind of bag comes with these kind of pouches where you put the, the lenses and all the accessories it's a very important thing uh, thinking that you can have a, a hiking backpack and you put your uh, gear in there it's not a good idea I've been there I have my lens wrapped around in my socks and in my t-shirt and it's not an interesting thing to look for uh, accessories through the clothing that uh, you are having. After you bought a tripod I think the first thing that you should buy is this it's a remote control I recommend you buy one without um, wires it's uh, it's a radio or infrared or whatever system your camera uses uh, I had ones with wires I lost them so uh, it's not very feasible to have one with wire especially in cold conditions for example in winter when you may have to stick a cable inside your camera it's not pleasant to do that so first thing first buy yourself a remote control because that is the reason you bought the tripod you want your camera to stay still when you trigger it and you can do this with the remote control. So these are all the keys you need to fix your tripod. If you, uh, a leg it's loose or uh, a clamp is not working or something, I don't know, you get to Norway and your tripod doesn't work anymore, you need to fix it and you don't have this. And well, judging by how many photographers are in Norway, you'll probably have no problem. Now, the first filter that you need to buy the first filter that you need to buy is a circular polarizer. I, w I hiked six months on the mountains with n not having one of these in back in 2007. And there wasn't a clear video what this, uh, what this did, or at least I didn't find it then. Uh, and, but from what I've read, uh, it sounded like an interesting filter. And only after I bought it I understood why you absolutely must have a polarizer it's it's a fact you can't duplicate it in editing you can't do anything to remove the glitter the the shininess of the leaves this will enhance the colors of the sky will remove the uh, reflections from water your image will look much more rich and impressive and vibrant the only problem is the overuse of this for example in high altitudes you you get the sky completely black and it doesn't look that interesting it it may be useful if you want to convert the image to black and white this may be a good use and also if you're using this with a really wide angle lens let's say 70 millimeters there are occasions when only um, a portion of the sky is polarized uh, a corner or only the middle of the photo and that look, looks bad that is the one of the moment you should not use it now my circle polarizers are all from Hoya are the HD version and the slim version just to be able to use them on wide angle lens without this filter being seen or vignetting the edges um, after that let's uh, talk about another accessory this is an LCD viewfinder it's one dollar on aliexpress.com and if you buy it from a specialized specialized um, photo store it will cost a lot more so this is very useful uh, when there is bright light you just uh, put this on the back of your camera you take a look like this and you properly evaluate your photo in terms of light you see the composition you understand the luminosity of the photo many times you look at on the LCD and say mm, it's pretty dark well you look with this and you see it's not dark it's okay 
now um, there comes a set of filters right now and let's uh, let's briefly talk about this one this is a variable ND and the only reason I'm using a circular ND is because uh, I want to film so if you want to film you will need something like this because if you film and you want your film to be at let's say 30 frames per second you need an exposure time of uh, 60th of a second and sometimes you need to um, use lenses with uh, that are really bright and that have wide apertures and this means when, when you're trying to film at uh, uh, let's say f2 in the middle of the day you need an ND filter to be able to achieve that 60th uh, of a second and by the way you need that to create a certain motion blur and to have that cinematic effect now let's move to these filters that are all um, from the 100 by 100 format the 100 millimeters format uh, I have the holder and the the adapter ring from Lee I recommend buying at least the holder and the adapter ring from Lee make sure you have the adapter ring that are, is for wide angle lens uh, it's it's twice the price of a normal uh, adapter ring but it's much more <laughs> it's much more useful you can use it on 17 millimeter lens and the reason for which i recommend buying this holder is this you can put it and take it away with one hand and it's very very easy very easy to use now in terms of filters i have uh, these leaf filters these are uh, nd graduated soft filters all you need is a two stop and a three stop uh, I also I bought this set so is it's uh, it also contains one, a one stop filter now I also have an ND filter of 10 stops from Lee that's the big stopper from Lee um, it's the first ND filter that you should buy and your ND filter should look like this it should not be a circle one it should be one of these because these are the uh, these are very easy to use you can simply put them on you just take them off and like that just like that but besides this you also will need a six stop ND filter now I had one I broke it I have received this one from Ken Faith you saw a video in last week for, with it you absolutely need a six stop ND filter at a certain point because of situations where there is low light uh, I also have uh, three stop ND filters uh, reversed that is basically it's it's creating an area of dimmer light in the horizon where the Sun is going up or the Sun is going down this is very important I also have another three stop ND filter gradiated and again soft still from Ken Faith um, the, the big thing about this one is that it doesn't get steam in misty mornings or something like that. Now, I have another accessory that is not necessarily abs an absolute mask. It's this color checker. It looks like this. And um, now why I'm saying it's not an absolute mask? Because now the editings rely more and more on shifting colors introducing let's say blue in the shadows um, and uh, orange in the highlights so basically you are changing the colors to suit your needs of, of an artistic uh, expression that is why it's not necessarily it's noisy important to have accurate colors 100%. I hope this was useful for you. If you have questions, use the comment section below. Subscribe if you're here for the first time and until next time, keep on photographing. It's the only way to get there. Bye-bye.